This is Premier Dynamics Podcast number 37, and today we're talking about the aerodynamics of a go-kart spoiler. So go-karts, they are a type of motorsport, and one of the reasons why you need the spoiler is to create as much downforce as possible on the vehicle so then you get enough traction to go through the corners. The faster you can go through the corners, the faster your overall lap time will be. And one way to do that is by generating enough downforce so you can grip harder. That way you can turn at um, greater angles and faster and not lose control. And often you see spoilers on the back of go-karts as well as many other other um, vehicles. And to look into this, we're looking at a paper called One-Way Fluid Structure Interaction of a Go-Kart Spoiler Using CFD Analysis. This is an open access paper, so you can find it in the link below if you want to play at home. And <laughs> one thing they say in the abstract, which is quite interesting, is that the spoiler on a go-kart is required to prevent the vehicle becoming airborne at speeds of 80 kilometers or more, 80 kilometers per hour or more. I find it incredibly amazing because at 80 kilometers per hour, a lot of aircraft will actually get up in the air as well. So like, you literally can take an airplane, which is designed to fly, put it at 80 kilometers per hour, and it will fly. A go-kart, which is not designed to fly, will also fly at 80 km an hour as well. So that's pretty amazing. And that's one of the reasons why a spoiler is important for go-karts as well. One was handling, the other one was for keeping on the ground during the straights. This is not um, typical of all motorsports though. We should cover that. Usually, for example, F1 or um, you know uh, NASCAR or whatever, the cars do not um, really have much of a, a risk of coming airborne and down a straight without the spoilers. They just lose a lot of their downforce and they, they can't turn very quickly. So the, the spoilers and um, all their flow control devices are usually just for or mainly for cornering, not for uh, straight line speed. In this particular case, it is also for straight line speed. Because if, if you can get um, power to the ground, you can accelerate to a higher speed. So they say that the optimal spoiler design balances the safety aspect of staying on the ground with speed and fuel economy. So anytime you put something on the on this go-kart which is going to affect the flow, you're going to be most likely increasing the drag, which then increases the fuel consu- consumption. That means you need to have more pit stops and then that means you lose time there so it's a delicate balancing act they say that in this paper they look into a particular go-kart spoiler with cfd at three different uh, angles so 9.5 degrees 19.5 degrees and 29.5 degrees and they looked at the drag that's being produced by each of these spoilers at these angles and they also look at a fluid structure interaction what that means is when you have a an object for example let's say a, a wing when you load it, so when you produce lift, the wing is going to flex a little bit. So the fluid is going, the air is going to interact with the structure and change its shape a little bit. That then is then going to change the way that the fluid interacts. So if you bend the actual um, wing, then that's going to change how it performs. We I actually covered something similar to this um, in podcast number thirty-five, where we looked at. Um, Oh no, sorry, it's podcast 36. We looked at 3D printing. So we looked at 3D printing and how that uh, can be used for investigating aeroelasticity. And aeroelasticity is also a similar sort of phenomenon where you um, produce some sort of uh, aerodynamic force, often lift, that then changes the shape of the object. Then that exacerbates the uh, amount of force they're producing, which then exacerbates the deflection and so on and so on until it breaks. So that's a fluid structure interaction as well. For this, they're looking at how the drag and the, the forces on the spoiler affect the um, spoiler shape. So that's quite cool as well. So they go in and they say that uh, car speeds vary from 45 k's per hour to 90 k's per hour. So a strong uh, chassis and a rear spoiler prevent the cart from flying at top speed. So again, I, I still find that really cool considering that at such low speeds, you can get an aircraft off the ground. That's quite funny. And they say, however, many improvements will impact the performance of the cart at the desired um, ranges of speed. The rear spoiler acts like a plane wing, but in reverse. So instead of producing lift, it's producing downforce. And one, there are a few ways that you can tell that a, if whether a wing will produce lift or downforce. One way is you just look at how it's uh, cambered. So if it's curved and the curve is going upwards, then it means that uh, you're usually producing lift. Another way is you look at, and if it's the opposite way, then it's producing downforce. Another way is to look at the wake. If the wake is coming down, then it means that it's usually producing lift. If it's going up, it usually means it's producing downforce. 
So there are just a couple of little ways that you can just look at um, an object in general, not even just the wing, and get a good idea whether it's producing lift or downforce. With spoilers, they're usually for downforce. And then they say these downforces allow the vehicle to travel faster and turn corners more safely by increasing the vertical loads on the tires, thereby increasing the grip, as I mentioned earlier. Without the spoiler, the body weight of the car would need to be increased to prevent the car from flying off the track at high speeds, which then means it's heavier and then you need to have a higher fuel consumption. So it's again a balancing, a delicate balancing act. Then they talk about how their spoiler is installed onto their cart and that has two supports, one under each end of the wing. And they have a picture of their go-kart. It's uh, fairly boxy, but once you look, think about it, you can sort of understand why this would become airborne at certain um, velocities. And the reason why is because if you look at it without a person in it, it kind of looks fairly square and um, you'd think there'd just be a lot of turbulence. Once you put a person in the, the um, seat, you then look at the front um, deflector, like, like the front windscreen, and you'll see that the flow will hit the front windscreen, get defect, deflected over the person, and then come back past the roll bar. That effectively is creating this um, camber and this thickness to the actual go-kart. So that means that effectively the go-kart is now going to be a wing shape, and that's why it's producing lift. Obviously, there will be some recirculation and some flow bleeding into the, the uh, driver's seat, but a lot of the flow will be coming over the top. And I actually did a, a, a small CFT um, simulation on our YouTube channel with a monopoly car, and it has a similar sort of thing happening there where when you actually have flow over it, the flow in the driver's seat is pretty much um, segregated from the rest of the flow. So this is like just this tiny little recirculation zone, and then that effectively creates this camber to the entire vehicle which increases which actually produces lift and that vehicle did produce lift so if you want you can check that on youtube as well i did that actually it's going to be coming out um, about the same time this is coming out and they go on and they say that they um, made their go-kart spoiler in solidworks and they have some designs here i, I don't know what the the um, profile of their foil is because i don't have any cross sections here i can sort of get a picture that it's has a quarter of apparently 82 millimeters and a span of 608 millimeters. But the actual thickness, I don't think I can tell. And the um, it's definitely cambered and it um, seems to be fairly thin, but I don't know the exact dimensions. And then they're bolted onto the, these two supports, one on each end. And the spoiler itself has end plates as well. So that's often to reduce injury drag. So as you don't know, the injury drag occurs because you have, in this particular case, on the bottom surface, that's going to be the suction surface. So there's a lower pressure. On the top, you have a pressure surface. That means there's high pressure there. High pressure bleeds over to low pressure, which means you get these vortices rolling up, and that's going to be um, wasted energy effectively. So by putting these end plates on, you reduce how much these vortices are being created because they have a physical barrier there stopping them from being created. So that's to reduce induced drag. And then they have a picture of the spoiler being installed at these angles. And one thing I should note is that when I say 9.5, 19.5, and 29.5, that's a negative angle. So it's tilted down, not upwards. When we talk about wings, we often think that when I say 10 degrees, it's actually tilted upwards. In this case, it's the opposite. So you can think of it as minus 9.5, minus 19.5, and minus 29.5. And then they go on to the um, FEA, so the FE analysis. That's where you're looking at the structural um, side of this object. They say that the spoiler is made out of ABS. So this is a kind of plastic. You can actually put it into 3D printers and print stuff with this. It's a very common plastic. The shrinkage ratio in that case is like about 3 to 5%, depending on the, the um, supplier you get. And they used it because it's considered one of the most realistic materials for modeling, considering how cost-effective it is. So they can use other materials, but most people use like the cheapest material they can get away with, and ABS is that material here. And then they show some pictures of the mesh for this FE, for this FE analysis, and I'm always um, quite surprised and um, a little bit envious of how few cells FEA engineers can get away with. So I, was, I remember quite a few years ago, I was working on this FOM project, and it required um, both aerodynamics and uh, structural engineering so there were some structural engineers there some fea engineers and we're talking about the difference in <laughs> simulation costs for aerodynamics compared to structural engineers and for example with one of their simulations 
they might have to use maybe two, three million cells and it will take maybe 40 minutes to solve. And this is on like, I don't know, 100 CPUs or so, 100 cores or something like that, 100 CPUs. And I was saying for my CFD analyses, I had to use like 250 million cells and it took like two days to solve on like 2000 cores, 2000 CPUs. So it's a completely different and FEA engineers can get away with so such little computational power compared to CFD people that it's, I wish it was that easy as well for CFD in terms of you can just use a laptop almost. So anyway, getting to the results, they looked at the drag coefficient production of the spoiler at these three angles. And they also looked at the effects of the airflow on the structure. So the forces that it was being produced that were produced and the deflection they have in figure five the stress the um, pressure on these airfoils and one thing that's interesting to note is they have it at um, on the suck on the pressure side sorry so the top surface for 19 9.5 and 19.5 degrees the spoilers ha see an increase in the pressure on this surface but then when you get to 29.5 degrees there's this, a dramatic reduction compared to the other two. And that's at least it look, yeah, it's a, a slight reduction actually overall. And that's because now the flow is separated over the, over this airfoil because the angle is so great. And you can see that in the, in the CFD they have. So for 9.5 and 19.5, the flow goes over and it gets deflected upwards, which is what you expect. And it's fairly streamlined. There's not much um, turbulence going on, but for the 29.5 degree case, there's significant uh, flow separation over the um, bottom side, so the, the suction side. And you can see there's a lot of recirculation in all these different ways. So this is saying that the spoiler isn't good at 29.5 degrees, it's not producing as much, it's not really working properly. And they say that in figure six, the von Mises stress results, they, they show the Mises stress, and it ranges from um, zero to 1.3 megapascals. And they say that, uh, it's assessed that the maximum yield strength of the ABS material should not exceed 30 megapascals. But at 9.5 degrees, the maximum was only 1.4, so it's fine. Like it's nowhere near breaking. And they say that the strain, so how much this this spoiler deflects, is only 0 0.5 millimeters. So in other words, it's not really deflecting much, and that deflection is not going to be enough to change the, the flow around it. So you don't need to then put this new spoiler back into CFD to see how it would um, perform. It's just going to be very close. There's almost negligible difference. And they say that um, at 19.5 degrees, the spoiler produces the second highest drag with a CD of 0 0.89. That's very high. For 9.5 degrees, the CD was 0 0.65. So that's still very high. I mean, 9.5 degrees is not a huge angle. And most wings you would be at like, 0 0.25 maybe so 0 0.65 that's really high and that's probably because they um, have some sort of airfoil profile maybe it's not optimized or maybe it is optimized for producing lift at this particular angle of attack but you're getting a massive drag penalty which is going to reduce how fast you can go and they say finally the 29.5 degree spoiler produces the highest drag with a drag of 1.26 so that's really bad like there are so many other shapes bluff bodies that produce a better drag coefficient than that. And that's because the spoiler is now um, installed. So that's it. Make sure to like, subscribe us. Check out everything we do. Check out the instrumentation we do. Check out the courses we put on and check out the International Aries Conference we put on every year. See you in the next podcast. Peace out.